Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good night. Bye. <laughs> oh, that was nice and quick this week. Yeah, yeah. just a quick one. Perfect. Have a good week. See you next week. See you. Bye. Bye. Not really. We're joking. Are we? I'm a bit tired this morning, I have to say. Yeah, uh, I am. It's been a busy few days, hasn't it, Paul? It has, it has. It's always busy. It is, yeah. Always I'm, busy. Um, but it's been busier for you than usual as well. Yeah, which we'll come on to later. More of that later in the show. But for now, welcome to this show and thank you for tuning in here on YouTube to this show, which is called Sunday Chat. That's right, with me, Richard. And, and me, Paul. Don't be uncouth, Paul. <laughs> this is a, it's a great word, this isn't is it? A show, this is a show with class and sophistication. Is Paul. it? Yes, because I'm here. Yeah, but it, can you be couth? Couth? Couth. Well, un well I assume so. But th there are some words where they're negatives, but they don't actually have a corresponding positive, do they? I don't We're know, you're saying to too up. many things. We're going to have to try and use that word on Scrabble at some point. Yeah, yes. don't, don't say too many things, you're confusing me now. <laughs> it's quite easy at the moment. <sighs> oh, yeah, yeah, so welcome, bloody welcome, and always remember, if you want it all, watch Richard and Paul. I think that's such a good little strap line that I came up with. I think it's really brilliant. It's Maybe we could get sashes made. If you want it all, I could wear. No. And you could wear one which says Richard and Paul. I'm not wearing a sash of any description whatsoever. What, what about for a beauty pageant? No. No. No, you could wear a scarf. It could have it on I the scarf. I don't need to wear it? a sash at a beauty pageant. I'm the winner as soon as I walk in. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. So as usual, we kick off with Richard and Paul's weather report. So Paul, Papa Poil, what has the weather been like this week here in London? Well, it started warm. And while you say that, I'll just have some of my coffee. To get me really motoring for the day. It started warm and sunny and has really cooled down at the back end of the week. Mm. So it's Saturday morning now. And yesterday we were both chilly, weren't we? Particularly in the evening. You right. had to go and put on a jumper. I had a little fleecy blanket over me when we were watching TV. Because it really felt quite cool. Even though it sort of wasn't. But we've had so much hot weather that that sort of dip in temperature that we're in at the moment really felt cold. The contrast was. is the word. Paul. Yes, the contrast. Exactly. Yes, the contrast. Well, yeah. we're kind of into what really could be described as a usual English summer. Well, yeah. Really? Yeah, it is. Temperatures of around 19 to 21. Mm. Yeah, that's about, where we are at the moment. It's about 19 today, indoors and out. Quite grey, quite grey. We gray. have had some rain. We had an awful lot of rain a couple of days ago, overnight. It actually woke me up. We had It was so sort of heavy it woke yes. me up. Um, but of course that was great for everything we've got growing at the plot and in the garden. So that was good. Water from the skies is always good for plants. It's full of nutrients and things, isn't it, Paul? Yeah. And yeah. Where do those nutrients come from? I don't know, actually. Well, exactly. Where do they come from? I don't know. Do they... Do, well, Are I suppose they they're in the atmosphere. So I suppose as they fall, the rain falls, it must absorb things in the atmosphere. Does it do that? I don't know. Well, it pick... I mean, there's all sorts of stuff picked up, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, we have Sahara sand here, you know. Yeah, and it comes over. It comes over, I think, twice a year, and the cars get covered in a sort of, like, red dust... So and it's quite obvious, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it must be picked up winds and yeah. atmospheric disturbances, pick up all sorts of particulate, and then drop it yeah. everywhere. Yeah. 
as a reminder to people to wash their cars. <laughs> I suppose so, yeah. Yeah. It's a reminder to you, certainly, yeah. Well, whenever he yeah. sees it covered in, oh, I need to wash the car, I need to wash vanilla, which is good, yeah. You like washing vanilla. No, I do, but I don't wash her as often as I'd like. Mm, there we are. So, there anyway, are. yeah, much cooler, um, grey skies today, overcast, with sunny spells. And we're now on the 1st of July. 1st of July. Saturday morning. What do we do on the 1st of the munch? 1st of the munch? Pinch. Pinch. Punch. 1st of the month. <laughs> I don't know why that is. No, it's just an excuse to we abuse to do that. the nearest yeah. person to you. We used to do that in school, didn't we? Yeah. Well, I didn't. I'm sure you did, yeah. So, yes, July and June, they're already saying, is one of the hottest Junes on record for the UK. Even though it dipped at the end of June, they're still saying it's going to be one of the hottest. So I think we've we've had something like... 10 of the hottest years in the last sort of like 200 years in the last two decades, which is pretty extraordinary, really. Mm. Mm. And after this cool spell that we're having, it looks as though it's going to get warm. So, you know, back to, well, as you were saying, back to the usual sort of summer, British summer temperatures. Some rain, hot weather, cool weather, yeah. Which is fine. Changeable. Changeable. Changeable, yes. indeed. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, so, let's... Not that we can see the weather. Well, it's changeable today, so it means the sun keeps peeping through. So I have to close the blinds and control the light. So we can't really yeah. see out. I can normally see out and I can say it's breezy. Yeah, but the problem, it is breezy. The problem is when the sun comes out and we've got lights on in here, everything gets bleached out. Because... <laughs> oh, pardon me, pardon it moi. <laughs> what? Oh, oh pardon it moi, I do like that. Yeah. My nose is running because it's so cold. So he does a testing, testing, one, two, three when I normally sit here, right at the beginning. You've done four today because you weren't happy with the light. I wasn't happy with the light. It wasn't falling evenly on my face and was highlighting certain features that I don't particularly like. You mean your crags? Yeah, made me look craggy. <laughs> Nobody wants to see a craggy Richard. No. <laughs> I was going to say a craggy uh, dick then, but I thought I'd better not. No, I don't. Your bottom looked very sweet the other day, though. Paul, yeah. that's something for us. Yeah. Not for the viewers. Well, no, because he, he did something in the garden. And, he, and, and yeah, we'll come on to that. Have you put I that I did down? something in the garden? Yeah, with the bird bath, the bird water. Oh. Here's the way to, to destroy a plastic bird bath. Sit on it. By accident. <laughs> Whilst there's water in it. Whilst it's full of dirty bird water. Dirty birdy water. Paul, don't imitate me. <laughs> I wasn't imitating you. Honestly. I didn't have my coffee. Have your coffee and shush now. Um, yeah, I was cutting the grass because I... So, you know, I don't use power tools in the garden at all. Because A, they use a lot of electricity... B, they make a lot of noise, and C, something else. So I was cutting the grass with my shears, and I stood up, stepped back, and virtually sat on the, the water, bird, water thing, bath, water bath, bird bath. <laughs> <laughs> And it broke. Oh. It broke. Yeah, which I was really annoyed. I got completely covered in water. I did actually call for help. I opened the back door and said, Pa, Pa, may I have your assistance? But no assistance came. <laughs> I didn't hear that. Because you were upstairs. I was upstairs, yeah. So I had to literally undress did, in the garden. Why didn't you just shout up? Because the windows were open. I didn't want to get dripping dirty bird water everywhere. Dirty bird. So I had to undress in the garden and I was semi-naked in the garden. 
Thank goodness the neighbours are away. Well, they would have seen the full moon. Yeah. It was a very sweet full moon, though. It anyway, was, yeah. let's move on. So, yes, you might have guessed I've been doing very some peachy. gardening. Very peachy. Well, thank you. Kindly. Yeah. That's one area of my body that doesn't appear to have aged that much. <laughs> Mine's more of a fluffy peach. Yours more of a sort of a nectarine, really. Poor shush now. Yeah. The viewers are switching off, going, ah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I've been gardening, tidying up, doing the usual thing that I would normally. I did the front garden the other afternoon. You did, didn't you? I did. I specifically had the goal in mind, but my plans were slightly scuppered. Because I was called into work. Oh, yeah. I was asked to do a full day on Wednesday, which I did, and then they said, could you also do Thursday? Can't really go into the reasons why, because that's between me and my boss and my colleague. That's it. Can't discuss it, it's council business. So you did Thursday. So I did a full day Thursday, but I said to my boss, look, I've set time aside on Thursday afternoon to do my gardening. So I'm happy to cover the whole day, but I will need to do from 330 uh, from home, because I knew it would take me about an hour and a half, two hours to do the front. So she agreed to that and said I could cover the phone, and so I had my computer set up in here, had the phone with me, had a couple of phone calls. Dealt um, with them. Dealt with them, and that was fine, and managed to get the front garden done at the same time, which was super duper. Hmm. And then yesterday, because we had some viewings in the afternoon, I wanted to get the back garden tidied up because we've had a lot of wind recently, which means a lot of leaf droppage. Particularly the palms. The palm leaves, which come down like little spears. They do, don't they? They do. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. You're looking out the window and they just go... They do. Whoop! They just slide Whoop! down. Like icicles falling. Icicles threatening to drop pierce. on somebody's head and pierce their <laughs> skull. <laughs> what a lovely image. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was good. So next thing would be naturally to talk about the house updates. No news as yet, although there is a family who are interested, but they haven't made an offer yet. Mm. Um, but more viewings have occurred. And hopefully more viewings to come. Which of course means more work because the house has to be completely and utterly spotless and completely yeah. tidy. Yeah. Um, so I'm cleaning on a very regular basis. And I'm generally keeping things tidier, aren't I? You are still very random, Paul. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I walk into one room, there's a pair of glasses. Walk into another room, there's a pair of socks. Walk into another room, there's a random book and another pair of glasses. Well, if um, there's a pair of glasses, there's a pair of reading glasses in each room. Well, on each level there is. But just put them Usually into a one bowl. on my head. Put as them well. into a bowl. <clears throat> and there a are book. Bowls. You know, you carry a book around, you read it, and you put it down on there the are table. There are bowls. It's not as if I'm putting it on the floor or anything. There are bowls. And if I take my socks off, which I do sometimes when I come back from the plot, I put them on the stairs. Why? Because Why? then when I go up to get changed, I take them with me. Yeah. No. Yeah. There are bowls freely available for items to be contained within. Do you want me to put my socks in the bowls? I simply... Well, I'd rather you put your socks in your shoes. If it's a temporary fix because then they're neat and away. OK. Well, yes. now that you've told me, I will do oh, that. Well, I shouldn't have to tell you. You're 50... We've only been together 30 years. I'm still learning your ways. Oh, Really? Yes. That's my excuse, anyway. Thirty-first <laughs> so, year. Gosh, I wonder if we'll get to thirty-one. Wow. Well, yeah. That was always Dad's thing. It was always sort of like when you're your, your birthday, you're actually in your next year, you know. So, uh, yeah. If the sock saga continues, I very much doubt we will. Alexa agrees. Alexa, <laughs> please stop. Alexa, stop. 
So anyway, anywho, anyhow, boo boo boo. Um, um, let's get on with the show. Yes, so it's been a busy week, extra hours at work, mm. which of course I'm very grateful for because it means a few extra pennies. Pines. Pennies. <laughs> um, and every little counts, mm. as the famous supermarket advert says. Every little helps. Every little helps. Every little, who's that? Tesco. Is it Tesco? We don't shop in Tesco. No, but that's the advert. Haven't shopped in Tesco since November 2004. Well, I used to like a little mosey around the big Tesco's. Mm, no, I got treated very badly one oh, day. Oh, poor and, you. Uh, yeah. Poor you. And I couldn't go in no, again. I, I couldn't go, go in. Um, yeah, so let's move on with the show now, Paul. In the news this week, there's been a couple of Big stories in the news this week, hasn't there, Paul? Yeah, there usually is, yeah. Well, the Prime Minister has been talking about the interest oh, rates God. and had the bloody cheek to say, hold your nerve. I said to Paul, we've been holding our nerve all winter. Thank I, you very much. I mean, you know, we know that Boris Johnson was completely unconnected Don't with the on. populace. But Rishi Sunak, I mean, hold your nerve. What a pathetic, contrite thing to say. Well, they live in a di they live Completely. On another planet. You know, what are you... Oh, I can't aff afford food for my children. Well, hold, hold your, your nerve. nerve. I can't afford to pay my rent this month. Hold well, hold your, your nerve. nerve. I can't Cheek. afford to pay my mortgage this month. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Well, we hold your nerve. Yeah, you know, I mean... You know, I need more money because everything is going up. I need a pay rise. Well, hold your nerve. Calm down. Pathetic. Calm pathetic. Down. Pathetic. I mean, absolutely appalling. Calm down. We don't have a defibrillator in the other oh, room. I, I, I mean, you know, genuinely, genuinely, they are all so Not disconnected with planet. reality <clears throat> that... Yeah, I, I, you know, Guy Fawkes, Guy Fawkes too, please. And the thing that gets me is this, every time he does something, there's that little sign at the bottom. What, this guy's a twat? Either says, you know, stop the boats. Oh, God, yeah, or, honestly. Or um, whatever else it said yesterday, I can't remember. <clears throat> and, uh, please, give me a break. There's a very, very easy way <clears throat> to stop people risking their lives crossing the channel. That's to allow entry legally into this country for people fleeing persecution of one sort or another to come here. And very easy. And the very other easy. the other thread of that is to process them quickly. Absolutely. That's the other thing. So we can either send them back to wherever they came from if it's a safe country. Or get them integrated into society here. Absolutely. And get them working. And get them working. And paying taxes. Yeah. Contributing to, to society. Just like so many people like that we know around here does. Because Those that's people the way in, it works. in the civil service, that's in the, the NHS. Works. You know, everywhere. No, but I mean, you know, hold your nerve. God. I'd like to hold a nerve in his neck. I'd like to that. put some conditioner through your hair. Well, um, I think I'm going to have my hair hold chopped off. Hold your nerve, Paul. <laughs> Don't have it all chopped off. I think you'd look weird with short, short No, hair. I think I'm going to go for the uh, Sinead O'Connor look. No, <clears throat> yeah. don't do that. Yeah. That's, you haven't got the right shaped head for a baldy. I could wear a ball cap, couldn't I? Because we know about ball caps now because of glow up. I could wear a ball cap and we could see what I'd look like bald. So in other news, this week there's been civil unrest in France. There has been. And yes. I said to you, didn't I, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot, these people, because, I mean, what good does it do looting a Zara store? Well, yes, I, I do agree. What good does that do? All that leads to, looting and rioting in the streets, all that leads to is curfews and lockdowns. Yeah, yeah. You know? And changes in government policy, as of course we <clears throat> have seen hugely in the UK with the shutting down of legal protest. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it can backfire. 
we agree with protesting. Yeah, totally. You know, legal protesting against, you know, some things that happen in society that are really unjust. Yes, protest. But looting, really, I think as societies go, we should be above that and beyond yeah, that now. Yeah. That's just caveman attitude, isn't it? You know. Well, you didn't see Fred Flintstone doing that, though, did you? No, you didn't. You didn't. So and what's it, Barney Rubble? They they never did that. They got in their their stone car and they drove along, yeah, but right. they didn't do looting. God. No. So interesting situations. Do I you mean, think that's why many Americans think that? Dinosaurs and humans lived at the same time. Because of the Flintstones. Because of the Flintstones. No, I think it's because of religion, Paul. Oh, right. Because to some people, the Earth is only 6,000 years old. Yeah, but they're mad, though, aren't they? Well, anyway, let's move on. Also, I picked up an interesting story about psychedelic therapy in Australia. They're approving the use of psilocybin, which is magic mushrooms, mushrooms. and MDMA, oh. which is ecstasy, um, in therapeutic um, work. I assume in really small quantities. Microdosing. Yeah. It can turn around depression. Well, in some cases, I mean, there's been very few trials done, but it can turn around deep-seated depression that's really long-term. It can kind of reset the brain. Right. That's what and they're, they're doing trials now, are they? Well, I think they're actually doing therapeutic use, but it's costly to do. I don't know why. why? I mean, you can pick up a bag of magic mushrooms for around five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> you used to be able to get them in that shop in Ely Broadway, didn't you? Used to be able to buy them, you? yeah. They were legal to buy. You used to get your the tarot cards and crystals well, Not that and you ever that. bought any, Paul. Well, no, I didn't. I did. They were Mum, twen actually twenty pounds for a pack. Mum used to make us. And they were fresh. Well, there we are. Mum used to make a special mushroom stew oh, when no, we she were kids. Didn't, Paul. Oh, don't be ridiculous. They were just ordinary mushrooms. No, Paul. I think they sent Your us mother to sleep. wouldn't have known what they looked like to pick. Auntie Phil would. No, yeah. honestly. So yes, that's been in the news this week. Very interesting, I think. Fascinating, Richard. Absolutely fascinating. Well, having ingested a few psychedelics along the way, I do know the uplifting benefits that they can have. Is that midday? It is. It's going to strike 12. Was it? <coughs> do you always find you count them when you hear the dog? I do, even even at, at night. Um, if I wake up at night and I hear it go off, I'll, I'll count them. Anyway, let's move on now. So, Paul, you've been down to see Vanessa this week, haven't you? I That's have. That's Vanessa from For Earth's Sake, the plastic-free shopping experience in Cranley in Surrey. And also from Great Green Barn Limited now. Oh, when's that going to be happening, Paul? Well, um, there... And can you announce that yet? Yeah, so we're, we're going to be starting doing courses around September, October time at the Great Green Barn. And the next time I'm, I'm down there, I'll take some photos of it and, and show it. Um, because it's a 17th century barn that has been traditionally renovated and refurbished. And it's going to be a performance space, so for meetings, for conferences, for courses, you know, court, well, courses for concerts, that type of thing. Only about sort of maximum 80, 100 people for that type of event, for seated events. But yeah, it's, it's looking good and we're going to be doing some wreath making mm -hmm. for Christmas. We're going to be doing some willow Christmas tree making as well. And there's various sort of plastering courses and also Greek cookery courses that we're going to be doing. So we're going to be doing various ones over the autumn, basically to, to find our feet with doing them. And then pe other people next year from sort of maybe the middle of next year will be able to hire the, the place. Ooh. But it's, it's an eco-ethical hire space. 
Um, mm. So there needs to be ethical reasoning behind it. You can't just hire it for a, you know, an oil conference, if you see what I mean. So um, yeah, yeah, it's it. We had a, a really good, really good day talking about sort of how things were going to work, um, and and going through that process of putting together a a information pack for people, but starting with the sort of questions that we might be asked if somebody wanted to hire the space. So Vanessa and I acted as in turn acted as sort of people who wanted to hire the space for a concert or for a course or for you know a meeting and we went through the questions that needed to be answered, questions that we might need to ask and it was really quite interesting going through that process so we've started that now and um, yeah it's it's good and, and for her sake is uh, doing you know doing fine we're going to be expanding, expanding, expanding. We're going to be expanding. We're going to be expanding the number of satellite deliveries that we do, and that's where we go on a Wednesday and pick up people's empty shopping bags and launched into space. <laughs> we do their shopping overnight on the Wednesday, and then we deliver their shopping bags back to a central location on the Thursday, and then those people transfer the money of the shopping into. For our sakes bank account so we're looking at more villages in and around Cranley trying to find a, a person who would be a sort of active head and promoter of that in their village um, and you know get people involved in it so yeah it, it's there's there's lots of plans lots oh, of plans good. Paul that sounds exciting and if you've never seen the video mm. about for Earth's sake and its birth Go here. It's like magic, isn't it? Always like magic. Good, Paul. That's lovely. Well done. I'm beginning to feel a little bit icky again now. What do you mean? Isn't that funny? Nauseous. Paul's changed the timing of his tablets. Yeah, or, or I have changed because it's been instructed. Yeah. So the tablets are normally taken at, at night, aren't they? Yeah, these particular ones. So you're taking them in the morning and you do occasionally feel a little bit icky. Yeah, yeah. Well, can you go on, Paul? Oh, go on! I think I can. Good. I think I can, yeah. It's funny though, you know, you, you don't think... I mean, obviously there's reasons that things, that particular medications you get told to take you know, at particular times of the day or, or, you know, when you're eating your breakfast or, you know, have food with this Take or whatever. with food. Yeah. Um, and it's been quite interesting over the last couple of days because I noticed it really a bit on, on Thursday, but particularly Friday. And actually, I think it's a, it was around the same time. I think it was around sort of like one o'clock maybe yesterday. I felt a bit... And, uh, and it's just come on in the last few minutes. Well, as long as we don't have to rename the show Sunday Vomit, <laughs> then everything will be fine. No, I'm I sure. haven't actually been icky. No, it's, it's just, just a feeling. feeling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let's move on to the next segment of the show. Which is? Which is, what have we watched on television this week, Paul? We well we finished the night agent. We finished the night agent, which season I really one. enjoyed. There's yeah. only one season. There's at only the one season at the moment. Although they have left it open for another season, haven't they? Yeah, been? I mean, I I think it's been really successful. So I expect a second season. Though you never know with the streaming platforms. No. You know, <laughs> we we've watched things in the past, um, which have been. You know, excellent. excellent and have been sort of in the media have been sort of shown to be successful yet they've been cancelled after one series um, but yeah I, I sort of hope it I hope it continues yes so do I because <clears throat> it was good very good yeah. very enjoyable we've continued with glow up so we watched the final of series five yeah and I think at the same time we were watching Series four. Series four, four or three. Three. Three, I think. Um, 
And yeah, I, we've, we've, we've enjoyed it. We've kind of gotten into it, haven't we? Although yeah. it makes us laugh because... Alexa, please stop. Thank you. Yeah, there's some elements of the script which are just a little bit ridiculous. And, you know, they're, they're always stating the obvious. Like, there's only two contestants left. Only one of them can win. And actually, we think, actually, really? Why don't you give it both, you know, give them both as a, a winner? The face-off, as usual, is going to be on a pair of identical twins. Yeah. A pair of a identical twins. A pair of twins. identical twins. Not it's being done on identical, identical twins. Identical twins. It's being done on a pair of identical twins. But at least they stopped saying a set of identical twins. Oh, no, they're saying that as well. Are they all they to say, oh, yeah, I hadn't they noticed all say that. A set of to me, a set of identical twins could mean three pairs of identical ten twins. Pairs. Ten, ten pairs. pairs of I pairs. Ten, ten identical twins. A room full of identical yeah. You just say identical twins. So some of the script is a little bit Conflab. 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 I think we better. I mean, you know, yeah. And then they go, then, then you, you see sort of sometimes you see some of the makeup and it looks, you know, generally astounding. But there's something a little bit off and, and then she gives a ding dong and it's symmetry, it's professionalism. It's, and you go, no, that's obviously off, you know. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, we, sometimes we they don't seem to pick up on things. I mean, we saw a makeup and it had a big straight line in one area and she's mm. saying, the blending is fantastic. And we're like, there's a line there. I, yeah, I don't kind of trust them. They might be famous makeup artists, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes it's a bit basic in places. But I think that's always the case, isn't it? When you watch these shows where they have judges and things, I mean, that they are entertainment programmes. Yes, they are. You know, so they, 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 they want to engage the audience in those sort of, you know, in a bit of... Um, and people... What's the, what's the word? Controversy and things, people you know. People like formula. Mm. You know, I mean, we've also started watching um, a, a colleague at work very kindly... Um, downloaded um, All Stars, RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars Season 8 um, onto a um, memory stick. So we're currently watching that. And I don't know about you, but th there is a feeling when you watch, when, you, when you've when you been a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race mm. for a while, there is a feeling about, a feeling of comfort. Yeah. Um, when you slip back into the formula, you know. Mm. The um, anticipation of what Rue is going to be wearing for the final showdown, if you like, mm. when they do the runway. Um, and the music and the things that he says. You know, people like that, don't they? They do. But Just they, like they... you like Paul saying Sunday chat. Sunday chat! Uh, <laughs> so there's... But there is, there is also some... Um, you know, there's twists and turns with, with RuPaul as well. Yeah, he throws there's, in... There's something that is thrown in and there's yeah. something that's been thrown in in this Series 8 of All Stars, isn't that's it? That's what I said. Um, I think we've only seen three series in total ourselves. Of All Stars? Yeah. Really? I think so. I don't think so. Maybe five. Anyway, it seems to be ploughing on, yes, yeah. Um, I didn't even know it got to eight, but it says no, season eight, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does say season eight. Yeah, yeah. Anywho, so we've been watching that as and well. And what is that on now? Is that on Paramount or something or HBO? I don't know. I don't know. It's probably illegally downloaded. <laughs> but hey, who's telling? <laughs> um. So yeah, Glow Up, Night Agent, RuPaul's Drag Race, All Stars. Sister Boniface, mm. we continue with, and actually there was an episode that didn't have all those light added bits, yeah, like the strange graphics and 
Yeah. You know, like the one the other day where she was hallucinating various things. Oh yeah, that was when they were at the holiday, not holiday park, but at the retreat Whatever. or something. And um, like... so it had a more serious edge to it, the episode that we watched. Yeah, it, it, was, it was all about chess and chess contests. And actually it was really good, it worked it was. that way. But it did, we did have some of her backstory in it. So her... Mother and father. She did... She did have one of those moments, but it actually took her back to when she was a child with her father. And I think that is a far better premise to go down than this sort of psychedelic hallucinatory thing that she has, which I always feel it feels a bit off. You know, we saw it a lot, of course, in, in Ali McBeal when Ali McBeal came out, which must have been 20 years or more ago, I suppose. And, you know, you had the dancing baby in that and and she had those moments where it was completely, you know, uh, angled camera and, and something happened and it took you completely out of that space and then bang, you were back in that space. I don't really feel that works with Sister Boniface, but, but <clears throat> the last few episodes, this series, the last few episodes, it does feel as though they're... The, the writing is getting tighter on that, I think. Yeah, I just think it, it, if you put silliness in, it makes it look like it's the comedic little brother of Father Brown. Yeah, and it already and has know, that comedy in it. You know, exactly. It's comedy there. Father Brown has light moments Absolutely. as well, which are subtle, very subtle. And I think you don't need something to be in your face mm. to have subtle humour. No. Um... So, yeah, so that was good. I think we actually said that in, when we were watching the first se series of Sister Boniface, we did say that it was veering too much into the sort of off comedy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we did watch Father Brown as well. Which I think we started watching series one again. again. And uh, Question Time. Yes, Question Time. Which was all about... What was it no, it wasn't. It was a whole mix. Last week it was all about Brexit, and this week it was it was the usual sort of political. Yeah, but thing. I can't remember what they were talking about. I mean, the usual things that they do every week. It's the news, the current current affairs. So, yeah, yeah, that's all we've watched. They this had um, Maori um, Black, didn't they, from the SNP on, which was. Which was really good. Maori Black. What's she? Mary. Mary. Mary Black. Mary Black. Um, yeah. And um, Hugh Fernley Whittingstall was on as yeah. well. Yeah. But that's it for television. Is that it? That's Didn't you it. Watch that's it else? for the show. No, I did. You uh, might have done. I didn't. Yeah, I I did watch some of um, Van der Volk, which I'm, I've sort of bit got into good um yeah. whilst you're a bit asleep got into. yeah i've got into it a little bit now i think this series is is better i usually watch that when richard's sort of dozing so oh, yeah. on the rare occasion where i'm dozing crying yeah. out loud mm. i'm gonna have a doze today are you oh definitely no but i mean dozing at night when you fall asleep at night i have set aside time today to do very little because i've been doing so much um, today is a kind of rest day, a mm. little bit of washing and uh, cooking. Yeah. I'm going to be cooking dinner tonight. You are, aren't I you? Am. I'm going to be doing a pasta bake to take to a friend's. Mm. So that's it. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Super duper special. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're going now. Yes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in on all of our platforms. Thank you. Sincerely. Say goodbye. 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 See you next week. Goodbye. Come again. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.